Bonjour à tous! Hi everybody, it's your sister Ari here for another Heart to Home devotional. I hope that you're doing very well and um, why don't we pray, come before the Lord before we begin. So Father, Lord, I, we just bow our hearts before you now and Father, I thank you that you walk with us in this life, Lord. We walk with you, Lord. We're not alone. And um, Lord, these lives are for your glory. So Father, would you just guide these next few minutes by your Holy Spirit? Would you just encourage us, Lord, my brothers and sisters that are listening? And um, Lord, we, we pray that you would have all of the glory and honor. And uh, we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, today I wanted to talk a little bit about survival mode. Um, hopefully, you know, it's not too heavy of a topic. It, it's a little bit heavy, but I, I hope that it will just be in this new year uh, a very hopeful thing. So, you know, we do sometimes face a lot of demands and decisions that can overwhelm us in life. And, you know, maybe it's hard to face certain sadnesses, regrets, or, or future fears. And when we're in survival mode, survival mode is it's the focused and, and driven exertion of one's energy towards just getting through the, the demands at hand. You know, it requires you know, our mental, emotional, spiritual, and sometimes physical strength just to get by. When you get to that point, you know, some people say they feel numb, blank, or empty, as though they're just going through the motions. When we experience stress, we can get to the point of responding in fight, flight, or, or freeze. I've talked a little bit about that before, but this is, yeah, just specifically survival mode in general. Um, and I find three main challenges we face when, when trying to survive in survival mode. First, we feel alone and isolated. And being alone might literally mean a, a physical aloneness without people, but it can also refer to just feeling emotionally alone spiritually isolated or or separated from social support you know relational support another challenge uh, is when we might feel defenseless and helpless you know the circumstances might be unavoidable future pain might be inevitable and self-defense might seem impossible and also you know we can be surrounded by uncertainty and doubt the path ahead might just seem hidden and, and just we might feel like we're in the dark. And so, you know, these are all the challenges. And I, I'm reminded of, of Paul the Apostle, who was steadfast in faith in a desperate situation. And he was transparent in uh, 2 Corinthians. And um, he records his life in survival mode. And, and I encourage you to read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 for yourself. Uh, we don't have that much time today, but uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, he writes, As servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distress, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, in sleepless nights, and in hunger. And in verses 9 and 10, he writes, Dying, and yet we live on, beaten, and yet not killed, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, yet possessing everything. And so here again, I just love the, the upside down, the paradox kingdom of God, you know, the, the troubles of this life, and yet having something far, far greater, far more glorious at the same time. And so, you know, if you feel alone and isolated and removed, maybe forgotten, you know, in need of a strong defense and the hope of Christ, God writes promises in his word. And I, I hope, it's, it's my prayer that we can all stand on them together. Um, first, you know, we are never alone. We're promised that Christ will never leave or forsake us. 
never forsake his own, and he promises to be a constant helper in time of need. We have his Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Um, and also, you know, we're, we're not left without a defense. Christ, uh, you know, those who live without Christ live without his protection, but God repeatedly promises to protect his children. Psalm, uh, Psalm 116 verses 5 and 6 says that the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. And and finally, you know, we're, we're not left without a hope. The book of 1 Peter opens with the assurance of hope for those who know God. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that was 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3. And this living hope is not in temporal outcomes or, or the, the, the things that we can see, but it's in our, our future heavenly home with Christ. And so as we read God's word in the lives of his people, uh, we can see that God never abandoned them. You know, he had a plan for us, for, for them, and he has a plan for us as well. And uh, it is a true hope. You know, it's not just getting by, getting through. You know, we, we have hope and he is with us. And so in this new year of maybe new uncertainties or maybe new changes, new departures, guard yourself uh, against going into survival mode. I just want to encourage you to guard against that by fixing uh, fixing our eyes on the abundant hope uh, and grace that we have in Christ in this season. So uh, why don't we pray as we close? Father, I thank you, Lord, um, that we not only just uh, have life, have the works at hand uh, to to do by your strength, but Lord, it is our uh, it is our great blessing, our great honor to walk with you, Lord, in your hope. And so, Father, would you fill our hearts with hope this this new season, this new year, Lord? I pray that you would guard us against going into survival mode and and truly uh, enjoy living life with you. Truly enjoy who you are. So, Father, uh, we, we pray this uh, over our church body, over our, our family, over those that we love. And, um, Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just, uh, Lord, do this work in us. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, church family, I love you, and I will see you soon. A très bientôt.